The Liberation Notes opens by showing an introverted, quiet woman who finds it difficult to express her feelings. The girl's name is Yam Meijong. Today, she ate with her office friends after coming home from work. Meijong kept quiet when all her friends were busy chatting until one of her friends asked why Meijong hadn't joined the club at the office. Because all office people must join one club, Meijong answered that she couldn't because her house was very far from the office, so she had to go home early. After eating, they decided to go bowling. During the excitement of the game, Meijong still feels lonely because she has difficulty socializing and finds it difficult to build friendships with everyone. So Meijong asked her friends for permission to go home first because her house was far away. After that, Meijong went to the restaurant to meet her older sister and go home together. Meijong's older sister is called Yijong. She is very different from Meijong. The girl has a very extroverted, expressive, and wild nature. So while her older sister was busy talking with her friends, Meijong quietly listened to them talk about various things. Gijong said that he was stressed because she was old now, but she never got married. The reason is that she has yet to find the proper girlfriend. Gijong also said she had just dated a widower with one child. According to her, dating a widower is very uncomfortable because a widower will prioritize his child. Hearing the story, Gijong's friends immediately tried to stop her from saying more. At this time, a man sitting next to them was a widower with his daughter. Realizing that the atmosphere had become awkward, because of them, the women decided to leave home immediately. It turned out that Mijong recognized the widower because the man was her office mate. When saying goodbye to the man, Mijong bowed as an apology for her sister's words, which might have been rude. After that, the scene shows a man who had a big fight with his girlfriend. Then he was dumped by his girlfriend. It turned out that the woman was having an affair with a man who she thought was richer. The sad man whom his lover currently abandons is Chang He, Mejong's older brother. After that, the three of them were seen returning to their home far away in the village using a taxi. While in the taxi, the three were silent, thinking about their problems while looking at the city streets. The next day, they helped their parents work in the fields. Their parents worked as farmers who owned quite a large area of land in the village. In that place, there was a man whom Mejong's father hired to help him as a farmer. The man's name is Mr. Gu. The man's background is unclear. He never told anyone about his identity or past. Suddenly, he came to the village and asked Meijong's father to become a farmer. Because Mr. Yeom needed his subordinate then, he finally hired Mr. Gu. They rested while enjoying lunch when tired of working in the garden. At this time, Chang he complained to his parents about not having a car, so he lost his girlfriend. This young man felt he was being cheated on because he looked like a poor person. So Chang he asked his father for permission to buy a car, but Mr. Yeom forbade him. Before this incident, Chang He had tried to pay for the car and installments but couldn't afford to pay the car bill. Because he didn't get permission, Chang He vented his anger. He said the reason why the three of them didn't get married until they were old was because they didn't have a car, and they were seen as poor people. That night, Chang He gathered with a friend in his village named Du Huan. They talked about their respective love problems. Chang He said that his girlfriend had just cheated on him. But Du Huan also said that his life was worse. He has yet to date long because every woman he approaches always avoids him. After all, Yu Wan just went bankrupt. Besides that, his face was considered not handsome, so many girls rejected him. Even one of the women he approached said that Du Wan was like an abandoned dog. After telling all the burdens in their hearts, they became more relieved and laughed at their respective lives. Then they wonder if their lives would have been better if they had not been born in a remote village like now, but had been born in a capital city like Seoul. At that time, Chang he immediately answered that they would be better than today. The next morning, Meijong went to the office as usual. While on the road, Meijong met Mr. Gu. But the man just passed by without saying anything. This makes Meijong think that the man is just like her. Introverted, and has difficulty communicating with others. While in the office, Meijong was asked to face her boss and two other male employees. Their boss called the three of them because they had one thing in common. They decided not to join clubs at the office, even though it is mandatory to deepen friendships in the office. It turns out that of the other two people, one of whom Meijong had already met. He was a widower, with one child who met them at the restaurant. Their boss asked why they decided not to join the club. Meijong answered that her house was very far from the office, so when she came home from work, she had to go straight home. Then the widower with one child explained that he couldn't join the club because he had to take care of his daughter when he got home from work, and another man explained that he couldn't join the club because he was an introvert. Their boss said it was office policy, so the three of them would inevitably have to choose one of the clubs in the future. After talking about that, Mijang returned to do her office work. But suddenly, she saw that her other boss was scribbling on her work. The boss said Mijang's work needed to improve, and she had to improve her performance. After returning from the office, Mijang went to the cafe to fix her work. 
Mi Jung felt very sad at that place because she had just been scolded. However, she needed clarification about where to tell the story because she was introverted and had no friends. Mi Jung could only cry alone. Mi Jung overheard her co-workers talking about her the next day at the office. At that time, one of her friends asked a male employee who didn't have a girlfriend why he didn't try to approach Mi Jung. The man answered that Mi Jung was beautiful, but her personality was ordinary and boring. So, Mi Jung becomes very unattractive. Mi Zhang kept thinking about what the man said, so the question arose. Why was her personality not exciting and boring, and why was she the quiet girl she was now? Mi Zhang thought that if she had only been born in the capital, she would be a different person who is not as restrained as she is now. She wanted to say something but needed clarification. She wants to make friends but doesn't have friends who understand her. The next morning, Mi Zhang got a message from a bank employee. At that time, the bank employee said that Mi Zhang's credit debt was due, so Mi Zhang had to pay it immediately. If Mi Zhang can't pay it, they will send a letter to her house. Here, we show the reasons why Mi Zhang got into debt. She owed it not to herself but to a man. Mi Zhang once knew and was close to a man, but the man asked Mi Zhang to borrow money in her name from the bank so that he could get into debt in Mi Zhang's name. And what she didn't expect, the man tricked her. Mi Zhang was too innocent, and now when the man doesn't pay his debts, Mi Zhang is the one who has to bear everything. That night, Mi Zhang tried to contact the man, but the man never replied. The three of them had a party with friends in the village that night. Once again that night, they talked about their respective problems. Mi Zhang still has problems, but she's a very introverted person. She just listened to what her friends were talking about while thinking about the debt problems she had to face. The next day, Mi Zhang went to Ms. Gu's house. Of course, Ms. Gu was shocked and asked why Mi Zhang came to his place. Mi Zhang answered that she had asked Ms. Gu for help so that the debt letter sent by post would be sent to Ms. Gu's house. Mi Zhang asked Mi Gu to keep this matter a secret because Mi Zhang didn't want her family to know that she had a large debt at the bank. Without asking Mr. Gu, an introvert immediately agreed to Mi Zhang's request for help. The next day after work, Ms. Gu gave the bill to Mi Zhang. That night, Mrs. Yum told Mi Zhang to deliver food to Ms. Gu's house. When arriving at Mr. Gu's house, Mi Zhang, who felt she had caused trouble to Mr. Gu, tried to explain why the debt bill had to be left at Ms. Gu's house. At this moment, even though Mi Zhang had explained everything, Ms. Gu just remained silent. Mi Zhang feels that they both have the same characteristics, and when she was with Mr. Gu, Mi Zhang felt calm. She thought Mr. Gu could understand her, two introverts in a hectic world. The next day, the office held a group meal. At this moment, everyone has been assigned a group to sit together. It turned out that Mi Zhang was at the same table as two of her friends, Tae Hoon and Chang Min, who had decided not to join the club. After eating, Mei Zhang coincidentally shared the elevator with Ta Hoon. There, Mei Zhang apologized for what her older sister said at that time. She was worried that it would offend Ta Hoon. But Ta Hoon said it wasn't a problem. That night, Mei Zhang gathered together with her siblings and village friends. It turned out that that day they decided to go to town. Here, a Woon appears whom Mei Zhang admires. She is Yuna, a girl who has very different characteristics from Mei Zhang. Yuna is someone who makes friends very quickly and efficiently expresses what she thinks. Yuna also doesn't care what other people say about her. Therefore, in her heart, Mei Zhang wants to be someone like Yuna. Even Mei Zhang often dreams of being an independent girl like Yuna. At this moment, Mei Zhang also thought that if she were born again, she would want to be like Yuna because Mei Zhang is now constantly afraid of what people will think of her. She also needs help to express what she wants. Because of that, she is not free and feels this world is complicated. Mei Zhang is also often lonely because she usually suppresses everything she wants to say. While working, Chang he supervises the shops in his branch. Coincidentally that day, the cashier at the shop was busy. Because of that, Chang he helped her to become a temporary cashier. While he was working as a cashier, Chang he's ex-girlfriend suddenly arrived who was buying at the shop. And what was even more surprising was that the woman brought her new boyfriend. When they met Chang, he pretended not to know the girl because he still felt hurt. Apart from that, Chang he also felt embarrassed and inappropriate. Because now his ex-girlfriend's new guy is more handsome and decadent than Chang he. That's why he was self-conscious and pretended to be a stranger to his ex. Afterwards, Chang He could only watch silently as the woman went home and got into her new lover's car. At that time, Chang He felt that his decision to leave the woman was right because the woman was happy with someone richer and had a car, unlike Chang He, who didn't have anything. Then it is shown that Mi Zhang contacted one of the man's friends who owed money in Mi Zhang's name. The woman told Mi Zhang that the guy had run away to Thailand and was trying to get back together with his ex-girlfriend. Mi Zhang felt very hurt and confused. Not only did she have to pay the man's debt, but the guy also left Mi Zhang to return to his ex-girlfriend in Thailand. After work, while walking to her house, Mi Zhang saw her parents running towards Mr. Gu's house. 
The girl followed them and found Mr. Gu, who was having a nosebleed. Mr. Yiyum immediately took Mr. Gu to the hospital. Later that night, Mei Zhang's family discussed what happened to Mr. Gu. There, Mei Zhang's mother said that Mr. Gu was seriously injured, possibly because of his drinking habits. It's possible that when he was drunk, he fell. Their mother told them about the beginning of Mr. Gu's arrival in the village. At first, no one knew who Mr. Gu was. Either Mr. Gu is not his real name, and no one knows Mr. Gu's background. The man just came to the village and asked for a job. Then Mei Zhang's father, Mr. Yim, saw that Mr. Gu was diligent, so Mr. Yim finally hired Mr. Gu. Mei Zhang suddenly said that Mr. Gu never told everyone about his background because he had a case in his past. So he fled to that village to hide from something. However, Mrs. Yim doubts what Kijong said because her mother believes that Mr. Gu is good, as seen by his behavior, attitude, and work. In the middle of the conversation, Chang He looked out the window and was surprised to see Mr. Gu already there and drunk as usual. Even though, just this afternoon, he looked like someone who had just been beaten. Yes, that's what Mr. Gu always does every night. He never once stopped drinking alcohol and getting drunk. It seems that Mr. Gu wants to forget something by continuing to drink. The next day at the office, Mei Zhang saw that her boss was very disappointed with Mei Zhang's work. Of course, this made Mei Zhang sad. Not only that, the other bosses kept telling Mei Zhang to join the club. That same day, the boss also told Mei Zhang that she had found a suitable club for Mei Zhang who liked to be alone. In front of her boss, Mei Zhang couldn't hold back her tears because apart from the sadness of her boss who had disappointed her, Mei Zhang was also sad. After all, being alone was not her life choice. She wants to have friends, express her thoughts, and discuss her complaints. But she couldn't get out of the situation. This makes her cry because no matter how much she tries to change, she will still be a strange introvert who cannot socialize. After work, Mei Zhang can only lament her life because she is fed up with the life she lives. She felt that no matter how hard she tried to change, no one liked her and could understand her feelings. Arriving at the village because she was fed up with her life, Mei Zhang wanted to say what she felt when she saw Mr. Gu, who was drunk. Mei Zhang immediately approached Mr. Gu and said that instead of Mr. Gu doing useless things like that every day, Mei Zhang asked Mei Gu to praise Mei Zhang because Mei Zhang was tired of her life. Her heart always felt empty and she wanted her heart to be complete. All the men Mei Zhang met were jerks, so she asked Mei Gu to praise Mei Zhang just once. That's what she wanted and never got from another man. Mr. Gu said he couldn't grant Mei Zhang's request because the girl needed to know what background Mr. Gu had experienced. Even the girl didn't know Mr. Gu's real name. The man says he is just as bad as all the men Mei Zhang mentioned. That's why he told Mei Zhang to go home immediately. At home, Mr. Gu was still thinking about Mei Zhang's words and thinking how to compliment someone. He even looks for sweet words to praise someone on the internet. The next night, Mei Zhang hung out with her office friends until late. Mei Zhang's office friend asked, why isn't Mei Zhang home yet even though Mei Zhang always wants to come home on time? Mei Zhang answered that she didn't want to go home early today. It turns out that Mei Zhang was very reluctant to meet Mr. Gu considering what she said yesterday. She was embarrassed because she was too honest with Mr. Gu. The next day, while at the office, Mei Zhang tried to contact the friend of the man who owed money in her name. She did it to collect his debt. In the end, Mei Zhang gets a reply to the message from the man's friend, but the person curses at her. Mi Zhang accidentally said harshly at that time because she read that person's message. Even though she was in the office, her boss was there, so her boss felt that the harsh words Mi Zhang said were aimed at him. Because of that, Mei Zhang had to receive anger from her boss again. That night, when Gi Zhang came home from work, she met Chang He's ex-girlfriend on the train. She talked to the girl. Here, it is discovered that the girl never left Chang He, but Chang He decided to leave the girl. While at home, Gi Zhang talks to Chang He. She asks why Chang He is distorting the facts. Why does the young man always look sad about being abandoned by his lover, even though he was the one who left the girl? All this time, Chang He always said that the girl left him. In reality, the girl always tried to contact him and ask him to make up again. Chang He can no longer cover up his lies and express his feelings. Chang He was looking for reasons to leave the girl because he felt insecure. He felt he didn't deserve that girl and thought she had the right to be happy with a more established and prosperous man than Chang He, because he thought he wouldn't be able to make the girl happy especially now that he had nothing. The next day, while at the office during lunchtime, Mei Zhang received another call from her boss to discuss the club that Mei Zhang should choose. Mei Zhang met her two friends there, who didn't have a club. While waiting, the three of them started thinking about preventing themselves from being summoned by excuses again. Mei Zhang suddenly got the idea to create a liberation club with only three members. Hearing that idea, the three of them finally agreed. The next day, Mei Zhang was seen going to the office. At that time, she ran into Mr. Gu, the two of them have never spoken since the incident where Mi Zhang said she wanted to be praised by Mr. Gu. Of course, they are like that for shy reasons. At that time, Mi Zhang dared to turn around to look at Mr. Gu, saying that from now on, the two of them would greet each other. 
At the weekend, when they were farming in the rice fields, Mijong told Ms. Gu that she saw Ms. Gu's heart was empty. So Mijong wants to know if Ms. Gu wants to be worshipped. Because Mijong is willing to do it when he hears the girl's words, Ms. Gu falls silent and thinks about it. Ms. Gu kept thinking about what Mijong said. Then the scene shows Mr. Gu being invited to eat at Mijong's house. At that time, Mrs. Yim said that Mei Zhang's father often praised Mr. Gu's performance because it was good. Mei Zhang's father is a person who rarely praises other people. Mr. Gu was one of the people honored by her father. Because from the beginning, Mei Zhang's father only praised Mei Zhang. Mei Zhang was an obedient child from childhood. That's why her father likes Mei Zhang. After that, suddenly, Ji Zhang and Chang He came fighting and entered the house. They took slippers and threw them at Chang He, but they hit Mei Zhang's head. After that, Mei Zhang remained silent for a long time. Then she took the slippers and threw them out of the house. Mei Zhang was always quiet in the past, but now Mei Zhang dares to take action, which makes her two siblings scared. It turns out that Mei Zhang has started to learn to express what she feels. That night, Chang He decided to go to Mr. Gu's house. There, Chang He tells about Mei Zhang. He said that Mei Zhang rarely gets angry because she struggles to express her feelings. But when Mei Zhang is angry, Mei Zhang becomes very scared. Because of this, Mr. Gu has to be careful of Mei Zhang. Then that morning, one of Mei Zhang's office friends called all her office friends and showed them a new club entitled the Liberation Club. There, they all laughed at this extraordinary name. They knew that Mei Zhang joined that club, so they asked Mei Zhang what the club was. Mei Zhang answered that she was also confused because she still needed a plan about what her club would do. Initially, she formed the club because she intended to escape an invisible cage in her life. Because of that, Whoever joins this liberation club will be on their way to freedom. In the afternoon, Mei Zhang's father made a cupboard. On that day, he was going to give the cupboard to his customer, the customer refused. Even though that person had already ordered it. The person said that the price proposed by Mr. Yum was too expensive. At that time, Mr. Yum could only surrender and go home with Mr. Gu. When he got home, Mr. Gu returned to the customer's house. There, Mr. Gu asked the customer to pay because the person had ordered it, which was why he had to pay. It is not shown how Mr. Gu forced the person to pay, but in the end, the person accepted the cupboard and paid for it. Then Mr. Gu gave the money to Mrs. Yum at dinner. Mrs. Yum was curious about how Mr. Gu would collect money from the customer, but her husband just kept quiet and listening, because her husband also didn't know what Mr. Gu had done. The next day, the weather was terrible. The rain fell heavily with lightning, making the office employees fear. But that day, Mei Zhang, Taehoon, and Changmin acted normal. And strangely, Mei Zhang thought that she felt comfortable in that kind of weather. Afterwards, they went to the cafe for their first Liberation Club meeting. They are unlike ordinary people when they gather, they will circle and chat with each other. The three of them just sat side by side without facing each other because they thought that was how they felt more comfortable. The three of them ended up chatting about everything, especially about freedom, the perceived freedom of each person. Arriving home that night, Mei Zhang was still enjoying and seeing the beauty of the rain. In the middle of that moment, lightning suddenly struck, causing the electricity in their house to go out. Mi Zhang was worried about Ms. Gu's condition, so she immediately ran to Ms. Gu and told him to come into their home. Because it's dangerous to stay outside at that time, Mr. Gu kept quiet and ignored Mi Zhang's words, so Mi Zhang immediately grabbed Mr. Gu's hand and took him into the house. The next day was the weekend. As usual, they farm in the fields. While she was resting, the wind blew so hard that Mi Zhang's hat flew far across the ditch. Seeing this, Chang, he told Mei Zhang to take it herself. But unexpectedly, Mr. Gu immediately stood up and offered to get Mei Zhang's hat. Mr. Gu immediately ran very fast and jumped over a very long ditch. Of course, the attraction amazed everyone. They thought ordinary people could not do that because the distance between the trenches was very far. From there, Chang, he even thought Mr. Gu was a former national jumping athlete. After taking the hat, Mr. Gu again jumped over the ditch to give the hat to Chang, he. After that, Chang, he gave the hat to Mei Zhang. From what Mei Gu has done, you can see that the man has tried to open his heart to Mei Zhang. Chang He was so amazed by what Mr. Gu did that he was curious about Mr. Gu's identity. So Chang He starts sticking to Mr. Gu to ask who Mr. Gu's real identity is. Chang He thought that Mr. Gu might be one of the national jump athletes because several national athletes have the same name. However, Mr. Gu would not say anything about his past or identity. Even when they finished eating, Chang He kept trying to follow Mr. Gu and wanted to urge him to reveal everything. This made Mr. Gu uncomfortable, so he told Chang He to stop. Mei Zhang's father complained that the mosquito coil had run out that night. Mei Zhang, who always obeyed her parents' words, intended to buy a mosquito repellent at the supermarket, but her father said it would be better tomorrow if it were late. But because Mei Zhang kept insisting, she finally went to buy a mosquito repellent at the supermarket. While on the way, Mei Zhang kept thinking about Mr. Gu's attitude towards her. 
What Mr. Bu does often makes Mijang because Mr. Bu is usually excellent to Mijang, and it is not uncommon for Mr. Bu to suddenly act indifferent and cold. Of course, this confused Mijang as to what Miku felt. While at the supermarket, Mijang thought she should thank Miku for what happened this afternoon. So Mijang bought alcohol for Mr. Bu because she knew every night Mr. Bu always bought alcohol at the supermarket to get drunk. Sure enough, on the way home, Mijang met Mr. Gu, who wanted to buy alcohol. There, Mijang gave the alcohol to Mr. Gu. Mr. Gu used this opportunity to ask about the meaning of Mijang's words, which said they would be different people come spring, not empty, but complete. Mijang explained that if they both adored each other, their feelings would be fuller, not empty like now. Based on her experience, someone will change after they do something they have never done before. Hearing the girl's explanation made Mr. Gu say that he had started to try to care about Mijang like this afternoon. After that, Meijang leaves thinking that the two of them could become closer. The next day, when Mr. Bu finished buying drinks, he accidentally ran into Meijang, who had just exited the station. At that time, Meijang tried to approach Mr. Gu, but Mr. Bu looked confused and moved away from Meijang to avoid her. In fact, at that time, Meijang attempted to open a conversation with Mr. Gu because Meijang wanted to be closer to Mr. Gu. But in the end, Meijang swallows her disappointment because Mr. Gu has just passed her by. It turned out that Mr. Gu did that because he deliberately avoided her. The man needed clarification about what to do with Meijang. Plus, Mr. Gu has to meet Meijang's family every day. That night, Mr. Gu daydreamed at home because he kept thinking about the consequences of rejecting Meijang's invitation to eat together this afternoon. Because from the bottom of his heart, Mr. Gu wants to get to know Meijang better. However, he is uncomfortable with Meijang's family because the girl's family currently employs Mr. Gu. The next day, Mr. Gu received his salary from Meijang's father. And that day, Mr. Gu dared to ask her father for Meijang's telephone number because he thinks it is the right thing. When she came home from work, Meijang suddenly stopped walking because she got a message from someone she hadn't expected, namely Mr. Gu. The man sent a message that he had just gotten paid. So he asked if Meijang wanted to eat with him. After reading the message, Meijang was happy. Then the two of them finally ate together. When he came home from eating, Mr. Gu asked why Meijang didn't have someone who made her heart full, even though Meijang had a happy and complete family. Meijang replies that she still doesn't understand some sides of her parents and siblings. While they were talking, Gijang suddenly got off the bus. The girl saw Mijang alone with Mr. Gu. This makes her wonder what Mijang's relationship with Mr. Gu is now since they seem close. Meanwhile, Chang He went to Mr. Gu's house after work because he had just bought alcoholic drinks for Mr. Gu. When he arrived, it turned out that Mr. Gu's house was empty. So Chang He decided to enter Mr. Gu's house, which was unlocked. While inside, Chang He was shocked when he saw lots of used alcoholic drink bottles there. That night, while drunk, Mr. Gu was suddenly approached by Mijang. After that, the two of them chatted for a very long time. Unlike usual, Meijang looked loose there so she could say what she wanted. Mr. Gu remembered that the other day he had bought ice cream for Meijang, but because he didn't dare to give it to her, he ended up storing it in the refrigerator. That night, Mr. Gu immediately took out the ice cream and gave it to Meijang. The next day, Mr. Gu was seen cleaning the house because Meijang had visited his house the other day, and the man felt that his house should be cleaned. After cleaning it all up, Mr. Gu took a photo of the current condition of his home and sent a message to Meijang. That made the girl feel happy to get the message. That day, Meijang also seemed to have changed. She was braver in expressing her feelings to her friends at the office, so it makes them wonder why Meijang's character has changed now. That night, Meijang went to Mr. Gu's house again. There, Mr. Gu said that he found it very difficult to clean his house, especially getting rid of all the used alcohol bottles. But after he decided to worship Meijang and get close to the girl, he became more passionate. At another time, Chang, he was still curious about Ms. Gu's jump. Finally, that day, he decided to have the courage to try what Miku was doing. Of course, hearing that Mr. Gu had doubts about Chang He, and sure enough, when he tried to do that, Chang He failed and fell into a ditch. Then the scene shows Mr. Gu's cell phone continuing to ring. There were many incoming messages from people looking for Mr. Gu's whereabouts. It turned out that Gejong's suspicion was true, that Mr. Gu avoided the village to hide from the people looking for him. From the cell phone, it can be seen that Mr. Gu's real name is Gu Jiang. The next day, Meijang's entire family is farming in the field. That day, Meijang and Mr. Gu seem to be getting closer. Meanwhile, Gijang was taking a break from work and sitting while using an umbrella. Seeing that, their mother immediately scolded Gijang because the girl seemed to be lazing around. But at that time, Gijang said that it wasn't her who was lazing around, it was her sister, Meijang. Because her younger sister was not working but dating with Mr. Gu. The next day, Meijang sent a message to Mr. Gu and told him that she would come home late today because there was a club gathering at the office. Meijang also talked about the club she joined which only contained three people with the same goal, to experience freedom. 
The scene switches to the cafe, where Mei Jong gathers with her club friends. There, each of them told what they wanted to gain regarding freedom. The story begins with Changmin expressing his heart from his notebook. Then suddenly, Ye Jong contacted Mei Jong and said she was waiting for her sister in front of the cafe to go home together. Without realizing it, Taehoon suddenly came over to her. Because they knew each other, Taehoon invited Ye Jong to join their group. The event continued, and now Taehoon was the one who expressed his heart. When Taehoon told him what he wanted, everyone fell silent while listening to the story. Taehoon said that when he was little, his father died, and not long after that, his mother also died. Because both of his parents died close to each other, Taehoon was devastated. And that is the reason why Taehoon will never leave his daughter, even though he is divorced. Because Taehoon knows how painful it is to lose both parents when you are young. Taehoon always tries to be an excellent father to his child. That's why Taehoon wrote in a notebook that he wanted to be free from that feeling. On the way home, Dijon was touched by Taehoon's life story. So she asked Mei Zhang for Taehoon's number. After Gi Zhang got Taehoon's number, she immediately contacted Taehoon. At this moment, Gi Zhang immediately asked about Taehoon's problems with women in his past. But Taehoon answered that all of his problems in the past had been resolved so that Gi Zhang could calm down. At other times, Mei Zhang kept trying to contact the man who owed money in her name. But instead of paying the debt, the man scolded Mei Zhang. At that time, Mei Zhang could only cry, lamenting her fate. She just realized that the man had fooled her. At home, Gi Zhang was curious about her younger sister's relationship with Mr. Gu, so she asked who asked her out first. Mei Zhang answered that Mei Zhang asked to start the relationship first, but they were not dating. Instead, they began to dare to praise each other. Elsewhere, Mr. Gu dared to answer the phone, which was constantly ringing. There, someone immediately told the Gu and scolded Mr. Gu. Here, it appears that Mr. Gu is a gangster who used to manage a bar. The person on the phone was a colleague discussing Mr. Gu's business. During this time, Mr. Gu decided to stay away from all that business and disappeared into the village pretending to be a poor man. That day, Mei Zhang tried to pay off her friend's debt by using the money she would use as a deposit for a house. She deliberately used it to pay off her debt because Mei Zhang didn't want her family to know about this matter. After leaving the bank, Mei Zhang met Mr. Gu. Mei Zhang said that she had paid off her debt. Mr. Gu immediately asked whether the man had paid his debt. But Mi Zhang answered that he had not. But he will promise to pay. Mr. Gu immediately asked for the name and telephone number of the man who owed Mi Zhang because Mr. Gu wanted to finish him off immediately. But Mi Zhang didn't give it because Mi Zhang felt she could still solve this problem without Mr. Gu's help. When she arrived at Mr. Gu's house, Mi Zhang gathered the courage to express her anger. Mi Zhang said that throughout her life, everyone has looked down on her and considered her incapable of solving her problems. And because of that, she will hide this debt problem from her family. Because Mei Zhang doesn't want her family to know that Mei Zhang is getting into trouble because of her stupidity, Mei Zhang also refuses help from Mr. Gu because she feels she can still solve this problem herself. Unlike usual, she just kept quiet. To strengthen the girl, Mr. Gu told her that he used to be a person who was not afraid of anything. But now, as he faced Mei Zhang, all of his courage was gone. Mei Gu also said that Mei Zhang was the only person he was afraid of and the person he most wanted to meet. Because of the man's words, Mei Zhang became calmer. That night, when Mr. Gu had dinner with Mei Zhang's family as an older sister, Ge Zhang asked about the relationship between Mr. Gu and Mei Zhang. Mr. Gu replied that they were just appreciating and praising each other. Ge Zhang felt annoyed because she didn't understand Mr. Gu's answer. Then Chang Ki explained that their relationship was more than friends. Then, when Mr. Gu went to deliver goods, one of his past friends, Sam Zik, saw Mr. Gu riding a truck. Sam Zik immediately reported this to his boss. But the man said there was no way a rich man like Mr. Gu would want to ride in a rundown truck like that. According to him, what Samsek saw was not Mr. Gu. Elsewhere, Mei Zhang is giving the results of her work to her boss. But again, her boss said that Mei Zhang's work was disappointing. But when the executives saw the work, they were happy with what Mei Zhang had done. While working, Mr. Gu got a message from his friend Samsek. Mr. Gu immediately called Samsek. Samsek said he had seen Mr. Gu filling up petrol using a truck. Samsik also discussed Mr. Gu's dirty business past. At this moment, Samsik said that Mr. Gu had to return immediately and not disappear. Mr. Gu must immediately finish off Director back. If Mr. Gu don't do that, then Mr. Gu will be finished. At that time, Mr. Gu could only answer that he still couldn't come back because he was busy, but not long after this, he would come back and solve the problems of the past. As usual, Mr. Gu picked up Mei Zhang, who had just come home from work in the night. The two of them walked together back home. Even though they were just walking together, that simple thing made them both happy because Mei Zhang never told anyone unless she was asked. But it seemed that night she said Mr. Gu everything she had thought. It appears that Mei Zhang is very comfortable around Mr. Gu. The next day, Mei Zhang was asked to meet with her superior. However, different from the previous days that day, 
Mejong let out everything she wanted to say and think. Mejong felt that she had changed, and at that moment, Mejong began to believe she was a valuable person worthy of being loved. Elsewhere, Mejong's father and Mr. Gu were carrying things. But while on the way, suddenly, the items in the truck fell. Ms. Gu immediately tried to return the item, but when he went downstairs, Samsik and Ms. Bake were passing by and saw Mr. Gu. So they immediately stopped and asked Ms. Gu to go home, because the two of them had been looking for Mr. Gu for a long time. But Mr. Gu invited them to talk elsewhere. Ms. Bak immediately said he knew that Mr. Gu was pretending to be poor and hiding in the village. From here it is told that it turns out that Mr. Gu used to date Mr. Bak's younger sister. But the girl had died and of course, that was one of the things that made Mr. Gu sad. After the meeting, Mr. Gu went home. While at home, Mr. Yim worries about Mr. Gu because he has met someone suspicious and looks dangerous. When he saw that Mr. Gu had returned home, Mr. Yim felt more relieved. When he got home, Mei Zhang immediately prepared snacks for Mr. Gu. After that, Mei Zhang told Mr. Gu to rest because he looked tired. When Mei Zhang was home, her mother asked why Mei Zhang always visited Mr. Gu's house. At this moment, innocently, Mei Zhang answered that she was now dating Mr. Gu. Of course, Mei Zhang's answer surprised her mother and Gi Zhang. The next day, as usual, Mr. Gu worked with Mr. Yim. Mei Zhang's father thought that Mr. Gu might be in debt. That's why yesterday he was visited by people who looked terrible. That's why he talked about his bad experiences in the past. It turns out that Mr. Yim once owed someone a debt, but he can pay off all the debts. So he advised Mr. Gu to work hard to pay off the debt. Mr. Yim doesn't know that Mr. Gu is a wealthy man. So he is not someone who can afford to pay. But he decided to hide from his past. That night, Mei Zhang went to Mr. Gu's house. For the first time, Mei Zhang saw that Mr. Gu was not drunk. Mei Zhang asks what the reason is. Mr. Gu immediately told her one of the last things he had always kept hidden. He used to have someone very close to him. And that person intended to commit suicide because her life was complicated. Mr. Gu told the person to go to a psychiatrist because at least he would try to help lighten the person's burden. However, after leaving the psychiatrist's office, the person did not stop her intentions but immediately committed suicide. Mei Zhang asked who that person was. Mr. Gu answered that she was his ex-girlfriend, and that was one of the reasons why Mr. Gu always got drunk every night. Because he was haunted by guilt, he always thought that the reason his girlfriend committed suicide was because of Mr. Gu's fault. Then the story flashbacks to the past. At that time, Mr. Gu was trapped by his friend, Samsik, so thugs beat him at the station. But luckily, there was a woman who tried to save him by telling him. And it turns out that the woman is Mejong. Unknown to Mejong, Mr. Gu decided to worship Mejong because Mejong was the one who saved Mr. Gu. Otherwise, Mr. Gu would be killed by the thugs. That night, when Mr. Gu bought alcohol, when passing a public telephone, he was reminded of memories. At that time, he had just lost the person he loved. His subordinates told him Director Beck had taken all the business from Mr. Gu. Because of this, Mr. Gu must return immediately. But at that moment, Mr. Gu had just lost his girlfriend and he felt sad and tired. So he told his subordinates that he was tired of everything. Then Mr. Gu got drunk in the rice fields. Suddenly, a wild dog was about to bite him. Luckily, Mejong came and tried to get rid of the dogs. And for the umpteenth time, Mejong saved himself. At this moment, Mr. Gu said that Mejong should not have saved him from his lousy fate because Mr. Gu felt that he deserved all that bad luck. Because Mr. Gu still feels guilty about the death of his lover and also his sins in the past. Because of this, Mr. Gu continued to think he deserved bad luck. A few days later, Mr. Gu decides to face his past. He goes to the club where he used to work to meet Director Beck. When Mr. Gu arrived at the club, everyone present bowed and saluted Mr. Gu. But Mr. Gu went straight into Director Beck's room. Of course, Director Beck was shocked and asked what Mr. Gu's arrival meant. The man expected Mr. Gu to come later. Mr. Gu said that he hasn't been able to sleep well lately since meeting Director Beck. Because Director Beck had misjudged him, Mr. Gu was acting and running away from all his problems by pretending to live a poor life in the village when in fact, Mr. Gu just wanted to take a break from his routine. Mr. Gu felt very disappointed with Director Beck because he had betrayed him in his business. Mr. Gu said that what he was doing now was only temporary because he would return. When he returns, he will make two choices. Quit his business and continue farming and become a farmer or return to this business and run it. Of course, when Mr. Gu decides to return, he will kick Director Bake out of his current position. Therefore, Mr. Gu asked Director Bake not to be strange. Before going home, Sangsik met Mr. Gu to explain the tragedy at the station that he had never sent a message to Mr. Gu because, at that time, his cell phone had been taken by Director Bake. So the one who sent the trap message was Director Bake. Samzik wanted Mr. Gu to understand him. Mr. Gu replied that he already knew everything without Samzik needing to explain. That night, Chang He found a costly car key in the toilet. Chang He is obsessed with owning a car, so he asks Mr. Gu if he owns this car. 
Without further ado, Mr. Gu immediately took Chang He to his apartment in Seoul, and Mr. Gu showed him his car. Of course, Chang He was amazed to see the luxury car in front of him. He never thought a man like Mr. Gu would have such a luxurious car. After that, Mr. Gu gave the car keys to Chang He, and Chang He drove the car very happily. Chang He takes Mr. Gu's expensive car to the village to pick up Meijong the next day. Chang He's friends were very impressed with the car that Chang He brought. They asked whose it was. After they found out that it turned out to be Mr. Gu's, they started to wonder. What exactly does Mr. Gu work for that he can have such an expensive car? The next day, while at the office, Meijong was insulted again by her boss. That's why Meijong confided in him when she met Mr. Gu that night. While drinking alcohol, Mijon talked about her worries about her boss, who always put her down even though her boss was not a competent person in the company, because the skilled people have resigned. The man didn't resign because no company wanted to accept him. After all that, the man didn't make a good boss. Instead, he looked down on his subordinates. Mr. Gu immediately answered that weak and competent people are indeed very cruel, because they often demean their subordinates to cover up their badness. After that, they took a walk outside. Because the weather was cold, Mr. Gu took the initiative to hug Mijong to warm her up. At that moment, they kissed. In the middle of the night, Ms. Gu woke up. Because she saw two people sneaking around, seeking to put something under Ms. Yim's pickup car. So in the morning, Ms. Gu immediately checked what was installed on the car and found it was a tracking device. To confirm who installed it, Mr. Gu immediately took the car to several places while secretly seeing who was following him. Sure enough, he saw a car following him a few moments later. Mr. Gu immediately smashed the person's car window and forced him to say who did all this. It turns out that they are people ordered by their boss, namely Shik's leader. So Mr. Gu went to Chairman Shik to ask him what this attitude meant. It turned out that the man wanted to meet Mr. Gu after a long time. He thought that Director Baek had killed Mr. Gu. After finding out that Mr. Gu was still alive, he was relieved. Chairman Shik also said that Mr. Gu should immediately return from his break and take care of business. According to Chairman Shik, his current position should be replaced by Mr. Gu, not Director Beck. Because he doesn't want to be seen as weak by his enemies, and he knows that Mr. Gu is someone his enemies cannot underestimate. So he requested that Mr. Gu come back immediately. But Mr. Gu said there was a better time, he still wanted to be in the village. That afternoon, Mr. Gu and Meijong were seen sitting by the river and looking at the beautiful scenery. Mr. Gu said that he wanted to praise Meijong. There, they were both seen laughing and enjoying the moment. Then, one of Mr. Gu's friends from the past, a young man named Hu Jin, is seen in the village and approaches the Meijuan family's house. At that time, Meijuan's mother was at home. The woman asked who Hu Jin was. Hu Jin answered that he was Mr. Gu's old friend. Hearing a man's name mentioned, Mrs. Yum immediately invited Hu Jin to enter her house. Not long after that, Mr. Yum and Mr. Gu arrived. They shook hands and then sat together. Hu Jin told them that Mr. Gu had a great personal previous job. But Mr. Yim listened silently to all that because all this time Mr. Yim thought Mr. Gu was just an ordinary poor person. After that, Hu Jin invited Mr. Gu to talk alone outside. At this moment, Hu Jin immediately said that all of Mr. Gu's friends and former subordinates had fallen into poverty. They had a bad job, so he asked Mr. Gu to return immediately because many people depended on Mr. Gu's return. Even Chairman Shik wanted Mr. Gu to return soon. The next day, Mr. Yim wonders whose car Chang he always drives daily. So he asked his son. At first, Chang He answered that it was his friend, but his father didn't believe him and kept pressing Chang He, so that the man could tell the truth, that the car belonged to Mr. Gu. Hearing that explanation, Mr. Yim could only remain silent, and he didn't think Mr. Gu was rich. But in the end, Mr. Yim forbade his son from using Mr. Gu's car. Of course, Chang He was angry, but their fighting had to stop when Mr. Gu entered their house. That night, Mr. Gu finally decided to meet his old friend, Hu Jin. At that time, Mr. Gu said he was annoyed with the man. Because this man always lied to him and not only that, he even secretly sold drugs at the bar run by Mr. Gu. Because of that, Mr. Gu wanted to get rid of this person. It turns out that the man Mr. Gu referred to was Director Bake. At this moment, Mr. Gu said that he would come back. Hearing that, Hu Jin immediately contacted Shik's chairman and said Mr. Gu would return soon. The next day, the police suddenly came to raid the bar where Director Bake worked. But Director Bake managed to escape. It turns out that Director Bake knew this was all the work of Mr. Gu who reported it. Because of this, he immediately contacted Mr. Gu and told him to wait in the village because after this, Director Baek would come there to tear up the place. Finally, Mr. Gu said goodbye to Meijong. He said that soon he would leave the village and return to Seoul. Hearing Mr. Gu's statement made Meijong ask why suddenly, and what was the matter. But Mr. Gu couldn't explain it. Of course, this made Meijong very sad because she couldn't accept that the man she loved had to leave her. After that, Meijong could only cry in the night until she decided to go to Mr. Gu's house. 
There, Mei Zhang said that even though Ms. Gu would leave the village, Mei Zhang would still contact him. And Mei Zhang would still see Ms. Gu once a month, maybe once or twice. Mr. Gu said he wanted to end his relationship with Mei Zhang because Mei Zhang would know about Mr. Gu's terrible past. But Mei Zhang says that she doesn't care about Mr. Gu's past. The man immediately advised Mei Zhang that Mei Zhang should be an ordinary woman and date a man who loves her, not a man who only praises her and is unclear like Mr. Gu. But Mei Zhang answered that she wanted to have children with Mr. Gu. Hearing Mei Zhang's words touched Mr. Gu's heart. He questions his decision and becomes doubtful because Mr. Gu still loves Mei Zhang and wants to live with her. However, Mr. Gu knows that his job in the city is very dangerous, and if he stays with Mei Zhang, he is worried that Mei Zhang's life will be at risk. So, like it or not, for Mei Zhang's sake, Mr. Gu had to strengthen his resolve to leave Mei Zhang. In the morning, Mr. Gu said goodbye to Mr. Yum to leave the village. After that, Mr. Gu returned to take care of his old business. Several days pass, and the scene showed Director Baek running from being chased by the police. However, when he was jumping over a road divider, Director Baek didn't see any road construction, so he landed on a large piece of metal that pierced his heart. So Director Bak died on the spot because of that tragic incident. At another time, it shows Mi Zhang still feeling sad because Miss Gu left her. She tried to call Mi Gu's number, but the man's number could no longer be reached. The next day, Mr. Gu and his new friends and subordinates went to the funeral home to attend the death ceremony for Director Bak. At that place, Mr. Gu drank alcohol and got drunk. For some reason, he laughed because he didn't expect that one of his enemies could just die like that. A year passed. Nowadays, Ms. Gu is at his peak. His business is a huge success and very different from his life in the village. Even so, he still missed life in the village. Besides, he still needs to remember Mei Zhang. At the same time, Mei Zhang is focused on her life, but she still kept thinking about Mr. Gu. Because of this, Ms. Gu finally decided to go to Mei Zhang's house. When he arrived at the house, Ms. Gu was surprised because a foreign woman had come out. It turns out that the woman is Mr. Yum's new wife. When Mr. Gu met him, Mrs. Yum told him everything. After Mr. Gu left the village, Mrs. Yum said she was tired of working in the fields. Because of this, she asked Mrs. Yum to sell his farm. Apart from that, their three children also said that they were bored of living in the village. But not long after that incident, Chang He found his mother sleeping for a long time. It turns out their mother has died. Of course, this incident made all of Mijong's family members very sad. And since that, Mrs. Yum's three children have suffered greatly. So they decided not to live in the village anymore. They moved to Seoul. Because of this, after his child left, Mr. Yim is now remarried to his new wife. After hearing that explanation, Mr. Gu could only daydream while sitting in the hut where he used to get drunk. Mr. Gu fell silent and felt guilty again. He thought, supposedly, when Mi Zhang was in the most complicated phase of her life when her mother died, Mr. Gu should have been there because Mi Zhang always tried to contact Mr. Gu, but Mr. Gu never replied. The next day, Ms. Gu immediately contacted Mi Zhang and asked to meet again. Of course, Mi Zhang was very happy to get a message like that, because she wanted to meet Mr. Gu. Finally, the two of them met. At first, they were awkward because they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Now, their appearance is also different. At that time, Mi Zhang smiled and said that Mr. Gu's hair was very different because it was longer. Then Mr. Gu said, with hair like this, he must be a handsome man. After that, they walked while continuing to talk. It was at this moment that Mr. Gu revealed his real name. Mi Zhang asks where Mr. Gu got Mi Zhang's new number. Mr. Gu answered that he had gone to Mi Zhang's old house in the village a few days before. So Mi Zhang assumes that now Mr. Gu knows that her mother has died and her father has remarried. Then they went to the market for a walk. While enjoying his food, Mr. Gu suddenly got a call from Samzik. So Mr. Gu told Mi Zhang to wait a moment because Mr. Gu had something to do at the office. When Mr. Gu arrived at the office and looked at the financial reports, he noticed something strange. There is a need for more money. Because of that, he immediately returned to the bar. While at the bar, Mr. Gu saw a woman getting angry and hitting an employee. Mr. Gu immediately scolded the person because it turned out that the woman was in debt and she didn't want to pay the debt. Ms. Gu did not hesitate to shout and threaten if the woman did something strange again. Ms. Gu did not hesitate to be rude to her. After caring for the woman, Ms. Gu visited his friend to look for the missing money. It turned out to be accurate. The disappeared money was hidden by his friend, who was supposed to pay off his gambling debt. At that time, Mr. Gu immediately scolded that person. After caring for all his problems, Mr. Gu kept his promise to return to Mei Zhang. When Mei Zhang saw Mr. Gu come back injured, Mei Zhang said that Mr. Gu was very different from an hour ago. Here, Mei Zhang realizes how dangerous the work carried out by Mr. Gu is. After eating, they walked around enjoying the beauty of the night. Mei Zhang said that her previous male friend still hadn't paid his debt. He celebrated his wedding very luxuriously, and when Mei Zhang asked to pay her debt, the man humiliated her. After that, they spent the night together in the apartment. Then Mr. Gu meets Chairman Shik. Here we explain why Ms. Gu was chosen as manager. 
It turns out that even though Mizgu is a jerk, he is different. Mizgu never played with women and gambled. Mizgu's only bad habit is drinking alcohol every day. According to Chairman Shik, Mizgu's alcoholism was severe. Because of this, Chairman Shik asked Mizgu to see a psychiatrist to cure his addiction immediately. That night, Mizgu and Mizgu were at the apartment. Mizgu was drunk, so he said all his feelings. Mizgu said that Mizgu already knew how bad Mizgu was. But even if he becomes a jerk one day, Meijiang must understand that Mr. Gu likes Meijiang. Later, Meijiang gathered together with her Liberation Club friends. Here you can see that all the members of the Liberation Club have found their freedom. Meijiang can now say what she wants and easily socialize with her friends. Meanwhile, Mr. Gu cares for his friend who took and corrupted the bar's money. It turns out the money was used for gambling. Mr. Gu beats Hu Jin and asks him to return all the money. A few days later, Meijiang was approached by a man who owed money in her name. It turns out the man will pay his debt. This made Mijiang happy because Meijiang's burden began to decrease one by one. That evening, Meijiang met Mr. Gu. Meijiang said that the debt had been paid. Mr. Gu also said the reason he kept drinking was because all this time he kept cursing himself and feeling guilty for things he shouldn't have done. Because of that, he tried to forget it by drinking. But after meeting Meijiang, Mr. Gu was able to realize what happiness means without drinking alcohol anymore. At that moment, they both understood what it feels like to be completely loved by someone. The end of the story shows each character finally being free from every problem shackling them. Dijon has found a partner who can understand him, and Chang He now understands that being happy is not always being rich. The most important thing is being diligent in doing the job he now has. Mi Zhang felt that she was a valuable person after getting Mr. Gu's sincere love. Now Mei Zhang can easily socialize with her new friends, her debt has also been paid off, and she is no longer shackled by loneliness. She began to have the courage to express all her feelings. Mijang also said there was a Meijang era before Mr. Gu and after Mr. Gu. Finally, Mr. Gu is shown throwing away all his alcohol bottles and taking all the money in his house. He needs to be clarified what he's going to do, but what's clear is that Mr. Gu wants to stop drinking alcohol. And it's possible he bought all the money because he wants to quit his job at the bar and live in the village with Meijang. And that's the ending of this drama. Thank you for watching. Remember to watch the next video.